Hello, welcome to this video presentation and thank you for tuning in. The purpose of this presentation is to guide you on how to successfully prepare for the board examinations leading to the MLS ACP. Let me write it down here MLS ACP exam. The uh, intended format will be in line with uh, what obtains in the exam. There would be a total of uh, 100 questions, multiple choice questions. And the good thing about it is that you are expected to have one correct answer. However, keep in mind that you have only 2 hours and 30 minutes. For the entire exam which looks like um, a lot but when you do the maths what it translates to is that you have one hour and one minute and a half per question so speed is of the essence but what you need in addition to speed is confidence you have to have a certain level of confidence which is um, what I'll be trying to focus on in this uh, presentation and the subsequent video series that I'll have. As I indicated earlier, preparing for exam would require two things, time and effort. You would have to devote some two to three months in preparation for this exam find yourself a quiet place a public library or some quiet place in your home or in some kind of a school building wherever it is where you would have some quality time and spend at least um, one to two hours every day looking through your materials I would also have to point out what I describe as toolbox uh, in this toolbox, uh, you would have two things I would uh, emphasize. One of them would be flashcards. You would have to build lots and lots of flashcards and um, look at them as often as possible every day. And the other one would be um, mnemonics. You will need mnemonics. Mnemonics which you build yourself. They would help a lot. So this is your toolbox here. When you have these two, like your flashcards and the mnemonics set up by you, then you will have um, a level of confidence that you will need leading up to the exam. I would also have to mention the problem of outliers. These outliers generally expose your areas of weakness. For the most part, you may find some of the questions familiar and you should, you know, but uh, once in a while you find a lot of outliers popping up and then creating a lot of um, confusion and really really rubbing off on your composure and uh, focus and that must not be allowed to happen because it, it tends to you know uh, make you give up or resort to a lot of guesswork the 100 questions I mentioned would be drawn from the following subspecialities of clinical pathology hematology, chemistry, blood bank, microbiology, urinalysis and body fluids some questions on laboratory operations and then a few also from immunology and uh, molecular biology for the most part you will find some questions that are pretty familiar and you can at least by some educated guesswork make some eliminations and perhaps get to the right answer but what is most troubling you know for most candidates 
uh, is the subject of outliers and I will address this in a minute. Outliers are those questions that are neither here nor there. You come, up, come out at the end of the exam and you begin to wonder, when did I hear, ever hear about this? What is that? What does that mean? Let me give you a few examples, for instance. Say in microbiology, you would have uh, this acronym, HASEC, and um, if you've never heard of it before, then you just will be thrown off. What if that were your very first question? See, what that does will be to kind of nibble or whittle down on your confidence level, and you don't need that. Or is something about the Henderson Hasselbach equation? And you know, you say, Oh, I did that back in uh, uh, physical chemistry, but here you are, and that becomes your second question. And you resort to, you know, uh, guesswork, no, Hasselbach equation. What if the next question has to test your knowledge of uh, uh, RL? RH nomenclature, whether you understand uh, the difference between the winner versus the Fisher race um, uh, nomenclature. For instance, a question may be posed in the uh, winner uh, method, R prime, R prime, and um, you would not probably be able to recognize that it is the same thing as. Uh, D C E slash uh, D C E uppercase C when translated in the Fisher race, or you could have a question asking you to calculate the coefficient of variation, and then with some data you are thrown off you don't remember the formula you don't remember exactly you've heard about it but you just don't remember anything more about it or maybe in blood bank again you know you give me a question on the bombay phenotype and you say wow uh bombay phenotype and then you guess at it so there will be a collection of this type of uh, questions which i would um correctly classify as outliers. An outlier in statistical terms refers to, let's give you a couple of data like this on this graph. Okay, and then you have one that here and maybe another here. If you were to draw a line of best fit this is what you probably would do. You would have to ignore these outliers. Otherwise, they will ruin your graph. So an outlier is typically uh, a point which falls out completely outside the you know range. Uh, it is, uh, in particular, uh, undesirable. And um, what we do in statistics is to um, reject them. But uh, rejecting them in this exam is not an option. So a major focus of this presentation will be on outliers and how to deal with them. There will be a whole uh, series of video presentations that address these outliers. And uh, hopefully you'll find them useful as you prepare for the exam. Thank you.